are bright and shiny in my mind You got me loving, hating, crazy indecision in my mind Welcome to the Fall Podcast, where the focus is on deer hunting, tips, tricks, tactics, and stories from across the Midwest. And now, here is your host, Aaron Blasey. Welcome to the Fall Podcast. I am your host, Aaron Blasey, and this is episode number 66. And today, well, we kind of got a special guest. He hasn't been on in a while, and he's back from his bear tour. And happy to have you back, man. Justin, what's going on, buddy? Oh, I'm not quite sure. I'm still trying to, you know, get reacclimated to to real life. I feel like so. Um, <laughs> just just catching up on some some work, you know, coming back to the grind and uh, just kind of still riding cloud nine. To be honest, went went three for three on all the went three for three on the bear tour. Uh, Idaho, Montana, and Saskatchewan killed killed everywhere. So it was. That's crazy. It was That's awesome. a hell of a three weeks right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a great time. I couldn't have. I couldn't have planned it any better if I, if I could. So you know, we, you and I literally have not talked much at all, just because you've been out of pocket, and you know, I just kind of wanted you to do your thing, and yeah. you know, and you've been grinding out. I've been following you a little bit on Facebook and Instagram and everything, but. You know, we, we've missed you. I think everybody else has missed you a little bit, too. So I want to just kind of catch up a little bit and, you know, definitely break down your last three weeks or so and and see what the hell you've been up to. And, you know, I got some stuff I want to tell you about the Total Archery Challenge, too, and that was a heck of experience for sure. But, I mean, let's let's get into it. Let's kick it off. Like, what? Uh, how did this bear tour go? I mean, you started off in Idaho, so let's kick it off there. Uh, yeah, actually, um, uh, wasn't really part of the, the bear tour, but it was the, the first leg of the travel sequence, I guess. Uh, I had to go to New York for a wedding. I had to pack for the Idaho hunt and take all that stuff to New York with me because I flew straight from Syracuse to Spokane. So <clears throat> that was fun, having to pack filming gear and, you know, hunting gear with wedding stuff. So, I mean, luckily it was like... I have like a, <laughs> I don't know, it was a small carry-on with, with wedding clothes and then my my mystery ranch pack with all the hunting stuff in it, and I mean, that's what I traveled with, so I literally had one day worth of nice clothes to wear to the wedding. The rest was <laughs> was my king's pants and, you know, all my camo and <laughs> my base layers, and uh, somebody was camping at the wedding and was like, hey, I need a tarp, and I was like, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, didn't you fly here from Iowa? I said, yeah. He's like, you travel with a tarp? I was like, not nah, not normally, but I got one if you need it. <laughs> yeah, you need a Lacknet Cabela's tent. I got one of those too. <laughs> yep, yep, just right here. Hold on a second. Um, so that was cool. I mean, got to see some some family and friends and, you know, have a fun weekend. Uh, my wife was in the wedding, so um, took some pictures and did a little bit of video for that, you know, just for friends and um yeah, just left Syracuse, went straight to, to uh, Spokane. Um, so that trip was was a filming trip. Um, I was just filming a guy out there that I met in Salt Lake, uh, Jeff Balch. He's the CEO of BaseMap, which is it's a like a mapping or a navigation app similar to Onyx. Um, there's a lot of different stuff to it, but it's kind of the same the same concept, I guess, if you will. They just kind of dove into it a lot deeper with their product, but. Well, let's hold on just a second. I want to get into something here. So, okay, what was break down the trip as far as were you guys going up on the mountain and pitching a tent and staying up there, or were you come down to the trailhead every day and going to get in a hotel? Like, what would that look like? Um, well, we were for the sake of filming and having batteries. Uh, he he decided to just do the hotel, so we'd drive up as far as we could and. You know, he'd, he'd been glassing bears in this one meadow uh, that he sees bears in every year. So he's a he's an Idaho native, but when he started base map, he moved out to uh, Seattle. And, uh, you know, he's been living in Seattle. So Idaho is over-the-counter bear tag for non-residents. So it's some, you know, hunting some home territory for him. And, and it was all public know, pay, land, right? Yep, yep, it was all public land. Um 
So I said, to answer your question, for the sake of filming and dumping footage and charging batteries, we were, we were hoteling it, but, uh, we ended up only having to, <laughs> we spent more time in the hotel than on the mountain because he ended up killing on the first day. <laughs> How many day so, hunt was it again? Was it a five or six day hunt that you planned uh, on? Ended up being, see, travel days were the 20th and 25th. So first, second, third, fourth, four days of hunting. And we killed okay. on the first, the first day. We killed on the 21st, so. Um, he got out there the day before me and went right to that, that spot and he was glassing it from, you know, across the Canyon and, uh, a big black bear and a, a big color phase black bear were in this meadow the day I, the day before I flew in and then we drove back up there the day I got in and we filmed the same big boar, the, the black one that evening and then, you know, we just decided there's no reason not to try to hunt that meadow. Like, let's just, he said, I know exactly how to get there. Like, I know where the fire line roads are. And, like, just, like I said, home home territory for him. So, um, so you know, I've, I've been on, I've been on a grizzly hunt, you know, a spot and stalk. Now, I kind of know how we did it. What was your guys' game plan to kind of try to glass one up and then, you know, wait for him to bed or was it like make a move on him, kind of get around him? Like what was your game plan and what was his game plan to, to get this thing done? Well, being that those bears were in that meadow two nights in a row, kind of decided to, to kind of do it like a deer hunt. Um, so we gave ourselves plenty of time to hike into that meadow and he wanted to go up there and just, and just sit on it. Um, that bear came out six o'clock the first night and like 6:15 the second night so we said let's plan on getting to that meadow by five o'clock and we that was the plan we we're just gonna get to that meadow and and sit there from five until seven and then just like hunt our way out you know there's there's all kinds you. of like hidden meadows up in there that you can't see from that that spot we were glassing at and it was just it's it was my first time to idaho and I could not believe how thick the timber was. And I don't mean, like, deep, dark, like like you see in an elk video, you know, like thick like right. that. I just, I just mean, like, deadfalls and snags and just lots of brush and, you know, willow thickets. Like, it was just, it blew my mind. It was like, I don't know, something you'd see, like, someone hunting in Australia, you know, just that, that almost really? jungly, dry look. Yeah, but, I mean, everything was... It was so tangly and just gnarly, you know, it was, there was no quiet way to get there, put it that way. Like, we could walk the trail so far, but we were bushwhacking, you know, the last two miles. No kidding. And, yeah, so, and it's just so many factors in it, like, just the elevation change and the, the way the thermals move, you know, in the evening. And, you know, when the thermals start rising, you know, the wind tends to die down. Like, you're kind of relying on that to take your scent away, but... It was, we ended up getting there and we got there late. Um, we got to the spot where we could approach the meadow from above and it was pushing six o'clock. Like we were way behind, kind of pushed our way through it, you know, with haste and, um, think we ended up blowing it for ourselves as far as setting up on that bear we were after. Um, we got a, you know, we kind of believed that he was close by and either hurt us or got our wind or he was already in the meadow when we got there and you know we went back and looked at some of the footage from the night before like when out when we were filming you know when we were glassing and uh kind of realized there's a lot of that meadow that we weren't even able to see like the way it dropped down oh, and really? kind of rolled yeah we we came in from above and we got set up in the willow thicket there like looking over the meadow and i bet you we could only see I'll bet you, I don't know, 30% of it, just the way it dropped off the, the hillside. And, I mean, watching the video where those bears came out, you know, the previous two nights, they were actually, they, they could have been there, and we, we might not even seen them because they were below this certain tree that we were using as a reference point. And, you know, we could see that tree, but we could see probably, we, we couldn't see probably the bottom five or six feet of it. So just using well, that as a reference... And it's video. tough to see. I mean, it's tough to yeah. see those rolling hills and everything when you're 
up in a ways away you know it's hard to get a depth on everything and when you get down ground level it's like oh shit i can't see anything this thing's rolling hills you know it's tough i've been yeah. in that situation a couple times and it's like you're almost like so your hands are tied yeah it's like what do you yeah. do from here you know it's a you know try to figure out a new game plan now right, and that's that's what we were talking we're, about when we got up there it's like you know this is it's not one of those places where you can go check it out and move on like if you decide to go go in there you're committed like you can't you right. can, the best the best thing you can do is give yourself enough time to hunt it out and that's what we did and we just we walked maybe 100 yards from where we were sitting and started walking back towards the trail and just caught movement through the brush you know the, the, this bear was walking straight to us and i mean we were hunting with he had a seven mag and you know the bear walks right into bow range i mean it's just the way it goes but <laughs> i mean it was turn the power of the scope down a little bit <laughs> yeah but i mean as far as like as far as ease of you know cleaning him and you know as far as the next six hours went i mean we couldn't ask for a better place for the bear to die it was it died in a meadow and you know we had a great view there was a big deadfall right there we we built a nice fire and i mean just kind of took it in for the night you know and to, uh, we got our packs loaded up and i kind of i put all my camera gear away and uh being bent over that bear and like skinning it and we we deboned everything to try to cut down on weight because so we were like i think six miles in from the truck yep yeah his his back was cramped up and his knees were giving him problems and you know we walked all the way in there and then he's hunched over the thing you know working on it for a few hours and uh he's like man we're not going to be able to make this in one trip and i said well you hurt now like what do you think you're going to feel like tomorrow like you're going to be able to get back out right here? yeah and he's like i don't know i'm just going to take a bunch of advil and and hope for the best you know so i was like no we're not doing that like just just load me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're not coming back up here let's just get this done. Like it would have been nice to go back in with some daylight and film some more, but I mean, for the amount of work it was going to take, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to, you know, add insult to injury there. And <laughs> it, right. just, just for the sake of some more daylight. Um, so we, we packed it all the way out to the trailhead and, um, we packed, we, we left it overnight, like in game bags at the trail, we we walked back out to the truck and um got a four wheeler the next morning and then just rode right to the meet with the four wheeler because that was that was the majority of the walk was on that trail. Yep. So we we got it out of the bush to the trail and then we left it left it by a creek. Um, it was nice and cool. I mean, you could it was weird. Like I've never if I had to do it again, I'd build like a like a shelf over the water because that that stream was just like ice cold it was really it was incredible it was like a little refrigerator yeah so you know uh did you guys have to leave like proof of sex and everything on the hide and like how would that process yep. go like tagging it tagging the meat and then like a like a hide tag too or how's that work yep there's um you have to leave proof of sex on the on the hide and on the meat um, I know that sounds weird and yeah, that sounds weird. potentially <laughs> difficult, but it's possible. I had to do it on mine in Montana too, but, um, yeah, we, so you, you have the, the regular like carcass tag, the head tag yep. and you have a, uh, the meat tag. So when you take it in, like, every, every bear has to be checked in with the state. I don't, I don't know what they call it, like their DNR or, or what Iowa Idaho's fishing game or something fishing game is yeah so there's a headquarters right there and you know you take the whole carcass in and they put a, a state tag on it like a seal so that when you take it to a taxidermist the taxidermist knows it's been legally taken and like there's numbers that match your license to that state seal and then to the taxidermist so like it's like a i don't know it kind of reminded me of like the way evidence is handled you know like there's a seal right on it. if you cut the seal you got to initial it and like you know reseal it like there's a there's a, a chain of events you know so it can be tracked and that's through hands. the mouth right you got to put that through the mouth 
No, this one uh, they just put it on the hide. Like, um, oh really? Yeah, they, man. Every, everywhere I've been, you know, with bears, you always had to put it through the mouth. Well, that's like the. So th- they did do that with with my uh, or with Allie's uh, Canada bear. Like we, okay. we skinned everything out, but we we wanted to keep the skull. And so Saskatchewan has three tags. There's a head tag, a meat tag, and uh, yeah, the hide. So you have like the the skull, the hide, or the cape on a white tail, and the yep. meat. And the meat. And they put theirs right through the jaw, like like you're saying. Gotcha. Okay. But uh, yeah, it was. I mean, the only thing I would do different about that hunt is not kill on the first day, just from a filming standpoint. I mean, you know how that goes. Right. It's, yep. It's a it's a blessing and a curse, but you kind of find yourself pigeonholed, you know, before you have a lot of footage to work with and really build up a story. So, um. You know, I just filmed everything the next day on the four-wheeler, going back in for the meet, and, um, you know, we just shot a really nice interview with him talking about how it was like his, you know, he grew up hunting that 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 drainage and that basin, and, you know, he's killed a lot of elk in there, he's killed deer in there, he killed his first, um, his first mule deer up there, um, you know, so it was just try to make it a little nostalgic because it was his first time hunting there in three or four years and you know to kill on the first day and um you know just <laughs> gonna rely on those, right. those time lapses and those scenic shots and just try to just well, try to make and it that, a little yeah that brings up a good point though too i mean when you when we say producing on the fly you know you never know what's gonna happen even like with deer you know you can you can go in and kill on day one, and it's like, okay, you got to make a thirty-minute episode out of this. So what do you, what do you got to yeah. do? And then, then the producer has to kick in, and yeah, and you got to think, okay, where are we at? You know, in your case, you're in Idaho, so it's like, you know, maybe do a backstory on Idaho and bears in Idaho, in in this area. Maybe there's a story there. Think about, yep. you know, a VO or, you know, a, an interview like you said you did. You can shoot to maybe do a backstory on. You know, maybe some big burns had come through this area in the past and the bears had been moved out. Like, think of stories like that or think about, you know, scenic shots getting into the timber and, you know, like the, you know, all that stuff. And it's like just adapting, being a producer and trying to fill all that time, you know. So, you know, you got your kill. So now it's like it's actually kind of easy from there, easier. You know what I mean? You just got to think outside the box and how to make that, how to make it appealing. Yep. As long as you know what your what your story just turned into, you know, like you can't exactly, just, yeah. You can't just wait till you get back to the computer and hope for the best. Like you got to have right. a plan. Well, and and plan that goes back to to what we say: how you know, being a an editor and editing your footage makes you a better shooter, and vice versa. Because now you know when you get back to the edit bay, you need these types of shots. You know that already in your head. It's like okay, I got to get this, this, and this. You know, and so that just helps out even better. Yeah, it definitely does, and it was, I mean, I was like, man, like, as much as I wouldn't want to do this for four days straight, like, I'm glad we killed, but <laughs> yeah. just one of those, it's just one of those things, it's like, oh, that's over, you know, like, but it's like, okay, now what do I have to do? It's, it's a good start this. to the, to the, to the bear tour. <laughs> it was, it was really cool, and it was, I don't know, it was, just my, it was my first time in Idaho, and he drove me around town a little bit and he kind of showed me some of the, the sites and there's a, I don't, I don't remember the name of the lake. It was right by, uh, by Sandpoint. So way up North, Northern Idaho, like in that little, that little skinny part, the really just the tip of it. Okay. And, uh, there's a lake up there. It's great. Just the tip. Yep. (laughs) There's a lake up there (laughs) and I think, I think he said it's the deepest freshwater lake in North America. Really? Like it's it's deeper than Ontario or Huron or any of the Great Lakes. It's like it's just under seventeen hundred feet deep. Holy cow. Yeah, like they used to he said they used to test submarines in there. Really? That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was he, I was he, we pulled over and I was reading the uh like one of those historical signs like on the side of the road and it showed the topographical you know the, the topo lines of the of the lake, and it was is impressive. Like it's wow. 
I didn't think a freshwater lake could be that deep. I mean, that's deep. That's deep yeah. for anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so. so that concluded the you know the kickoff. So now let's transition yep. to Montana. <clears throat> now, you had another pretty good hunt here, and this you were actually hunting on this one, but it took you a little bit longer. Yeah, it did. Um, so I left. I left Idaho. Or, or my flight was out of Spokane, Washington, on the twenty fifth, and I got back here at like eight o'clock at night on the twenty fifth. So I'm up all night. I'm repacking for Montana and for my wife's Canada hunt because now I'm driving. So I fly back from Idaho to Iowa, repack, go to bed at like two a.m. And I'm like, screw it. I'm just gonna. I'm going to sleep so I feel good, and whatever time I leave, I leave. Like, I'm not going to try to get up at, you know, I'm not going to try to drive all that on three hours of sleep. So I did that. I went to the grocery store. I got a few things to take with me. Had the truck loaded up, and I ended up leaving at, like, like 11 o'clock in the morning. Drove all the way out there. Uh, stayed with a couple friends who live in uh, Big Sky. Um, and he said, you know, like, there's a couple of places you can start out at. Like we really like this place and you know, there's, there's grizzlies up there. So just be careful. Like, you know, and we ended up taking a drive out there the night that I got to, to, uh, Montana. And, uh, it was just cool, man. It was, again, the first time I've ever been to Montana, just like, just like Idaho. But uh, I'm just kind of, you know, looking, looking like Ralphie, you know, looking in the window at the BB gun, you know, just like <laughs> <laughs> eyes wide open and just, just kind of taking it in. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've wanted to go to Montana my whole life. So this was like, Montana's this was beautiful. Me. This was it for me, man. This was like the, the here it comes, you know, this is, this yep. is what you've been waiting for, you know? So I was yep. just like, let's go check it out. Like, they'll take me up there right now. Let's go for a ride. Yep. So we, we load their dogs up in the truck. Like I just drove. 18 hours straight, you know, and like, let's go, let's get back out there. <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, put their dogs in the truck and we, we take a cruise up the, up the road there. And he was like, yeah, my buddies have hunted up here the last, over the last week. And they both saw bears the one time they came out to hunt. So should have a good shot. And I was like, all right, cool. So I, I just pulled out that, that base map app again. And I was checking out, you know, add the layer for the for the uh like hiking trails horse trails the forest service roads and i was like well i just gotta pick one and go so i just picked one i started going and i mean i ended up going uh like six miles one way so by the time i turned around came back to the to the truck i took a little shortcut when i got back so i I cut some time off but (laughs) um i crossed paths with one black bear that day which was a, a pretty big bear and uh i i got back out and i had some daylight left and i was like yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna go back i'm gonna turn around and go back like 500 yards and just watch this hillside and i literally turn around and i see a bear walking across that hillside and it's a freaking grizzly like i just walked through there 15 minutes ago and there's a grizzly walking right through it and i was like oh my god (laughs) is that your first grizzly um, sighting yeah so oh, yeah. what did I so what did I do? I throw the shotgun mic on the camera, I get my tripod out and I go running right after the thing. <laughs> I, I, I ran right back down the road so I could get a shot of him before he made his way across the meadow and or the hillside there and it was cool. It was from like five or six hundred yards away, so I mean I was I was pretty safe, but I was right. like, I gotta I gotta make sure I film this. This is so cool and I mean it was just a it was an awesome first day. And I'm I'm by myself on this this whole hunt, so those guys showed me, you know, some places to start, drove me out the, out that road. And, um, it was just, it was just so cool to be out there by myself. And, you know, it's one thing to do it with a buddy and, you know, kind of tag team a hunt like that. But, um, it's the first time I've done something like that on my own to where it's just, it's just me, you know, like my decisions, you know, success or fail, it's all on me. It's all on you. there's no talking about it, you know. There's like, what do you want to do? Or are you hungry? Do you need more water? It's just like, nope, I'm good. Just keep going. Just keep walking, you know. And I mean, it was a, it was a great first day. I couldn't have. The weather was great. Um, they said it had been raining there for for weeks, 
and as soon as I get there, it stopped raining. It was blue sky, 75 degrees. I mean, just that just that flip of the switch that kind of woke up nature and got everything yep. moving. I mean, I, I was seeing elk. I was seeing mule deer. Um, and the first 24 hours I was in Montana, I saw, I think I saw every big game animal except for a mountain goat and a wolf. I mean, and I did saw. Did you see a moose? I saw a moose. I saw bighorns. I saw elk, mule deer, black bears, grizzly bears. I mean, I didn't see any whitetails. I mean, I know they're, they're there, but it's about right. to, a, a wolf and a whitetail is about the only thing I didn't see. And a mountain so, goat. So. You know, seeing all these animals and everything, I mean, it's got to have you uh, just all giddy. You know what I mean? You're, you're back in it. You're hunting and everything. No, you had your bow and your gun, right? You were taking both? Um, I took the bow with me in case I decided I wanted to hunt in Canada. But this, when I went into this hunt, um, this was... It was all gun? This was all gun, yeah, in my mind. Okay. Like that, that's, I had made the decision to just stick with a rifle because... You know, I, I didn't know the ground. I didn't know, you know, what the conditions were like or, like, if I was going to be able to stalk or how far away I was going to have to be looking for a bear. I just said, over-the-counter tag, first time, like, I'm just going to take a gun, and if I can get, you know, within three 400 yards, I'll be good. Okay. So, so then what what was your days consisting of? I mean, were you getting up first thing in the morning at daybreak before, heading up to the mountain, and just, I mean, I know you spend a lot of time behind the glass when you're doing that stuff and just trying to find something, but, you know, was that your tactic or was it like, you know, the bears weren't moving until later in the afternoon and, you know, you weren't wasting your time with the mornings? I mean, what was that like? Yeah, I wasn't really like, I wasn't counting on hunting the mornings. Um, I wasn't camping, you know, I wasn't really out there to be able to say, oh, I'll just walk up to this ridge this morning in glass for a couple hours, come back, take a nap. It was... You know, I was staying with a friend, and, you know, it, it, it wasn't getting dark out there till like, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yep. So if I'm, if I'm five or six miles away, you know, when night hits, I got a five or six-mile walk back to the truck. So there's another, you know, hour and a half, two hours, plus the drive back to their house. And, like, I'd get back, and it was, like, 1230. And the first night, they were, they were kind of worried about me. They were texting me, and I didn't have service anywhere. Um yeah, U.S. Cellular should not be called U.S. It should be called, like, <laughs> Iowa Cellular because it doesn't work <laughs> anywhere else in the U.S. It's garbage. That's a lot like uh, Illinois, southern Illinois in, in particular, like Verizon or anything like that works doesn't work down there. It's all, like, AT&T is the only thing that works. Yeah, it's it was so annoying. But, you know, I was, I was just hunting afternoons to answer your question. So I was – I'd get back late. I would – I wouldn't say sleep in, but I mean, I was just hanging out with my friends there and they ended up having to go to South Dakota uh, for a wedding. So um, I stayed with them for two nights and then I actually rented a a small cabin uh, from a guy that was a little bit closer to Bozeman and uh, actually found it on Airbnb. Um, These, my friends are friends with the guy who owns this place and it happened to be available and it was like 70 bucks a night and i was like sold and right uh, kind of a that, to me that kind of added to the whole the whole trip because it was you know it had electricity but you know there was well water outside the outhouse and he had a team of draft horses in his in his pasture right there and he was the last house like on a dead end dirt road and you know the the gallatin range was right out the back door and it's just like that picturesque like montana view you know like all the houses down in the valley and then you look up and it's just national forest and it was just it was gorgeous yep and uh so come to find out the guy that i was renting that from his name was paul um he was a hunting guide in alaska for like 16 seasons he would he would go up there just for the bear season and the moose season he would guide fall grizzlies and moose and then come back to Montana. So this guy was like, oh, he, he's like, you got a map? He's like, I'll, I'll point out a few places for you to go check out. Like, we see bears all the time riding horses. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, he, he pointed out, and it happened. One of the one of the trails he pointed out to me happened to be, uh, well, that's, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, 
you pointed out one that said, you know, it's a popular hiking trail, but if you if you get way back there and get off the trail, he's like, there's there's some good meadows up on top of this on top of this mountain and you know on the hillside. He said it's going to be a long walk just to get there and check it out, you know, at prime time, but it might be worth it. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So at this point, I'm I'm 30 miles from where I just hunted the day before, so I'm like, I'm not going to drive back down there and make that walk again. And you know, the grizzly kind of had me keyed up a little bit, and I was like, yeah, it was cool, but I didn't see but one black bear in there, and knowing there's a grizzly that close to the to trailhead, like I, I don't want to really mess with it again. But so I go in at like one o'clock. There's not even a place to park. There's mountain bikers. There's vans. There's like small buses. <laughs> you know, people hiking Any other this hunters? trail. No, no, nope. really, really. That was one thing I was really surprised by. Like apparently, a lot of hunters in Montana they don't really target bears for whatever reason. I mean, I'm sure there are people that do, but the the vibe I got and what my buddy was telling me is most people will just get one. You know, in case they happen to cross one while they're camping or hiking or something, right. you know, they can legally shoot it. But, you know, no one really goes out of their way to hunt bears. And I was like, all right, well, so here's me, you know, got my got my camo on, got my backpack loaded down, and I got a 308 sticking out the side of it. And I'm just, I'm just hoping. With Hunter's just, Orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with with my orange vest on and. I'm just huffing it up the trail and like I got mountain bikers whizzing past me and I got people coming down the trail and I was like, holy crap, man, like this is a waste of time. And uh, I was like a mile and a half into the, on the trail and I started seeing less and less people and this, this lady rounds the corner with her dog and she was like, oh my gosh, are you bear hunting? And I was like, yeah. I'm thinking like, okay, this is going to go one of two ways here. Like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like, I can't deny it. Yep, I'm, I'm hunting. I got a gun and, a, you know, here's my, here's my stuff. And, uh, I mean, luckily she was just super cool and she was like, that's so awesome. Like, I've, I've run into some, some cat hunters out here in the past, but she's like, I love seeing hunters out on, on these same trails. And she's like, it's so pretty up there. Like, if you can get back there off the trail. And I said, yeah, that's what I've heard. I just, you know, I'm, I've never been here. I'm just checking it out. And she's like, that's so awesome. Like, she's like, just, She's like, go to that third bridge, take the bottom trail, and then go like another quarter mile, and you're not going to see another person. I guarantee it. And I was like, all right, sweet. So I, I I went to where she said, and I got across that third bridge, and I mean, it was just like a straight vertical, like straight up the hill off my left side. And I was like, well, here we go. And I uh, pulled my map up. I found a meadow, and I just started heading for that meadow, and um. You know, I kind of learned my lesson in Idaho, and I said I want to approach this meadow from the bottom instead of the top. Right. So I I did that, and I got up to it, and I was just like, man, this is too nice. Like, there's supposed to be a bear right here. Like, there was bear crap in the meadow, and, like, there was a big elk wallow up on top of it, like, mud everywhere, tracks in it. You know, no bear tracks. So I was like, all right, well, not surprising. Like, it's there's a lot of traffic up here, and... I'm just kind of checking out the wallow and I'm looking over the edges and I'm looking around and I spot this bear in the next meadow over like to my west. So I t- turn that, I turn that layer on, on the phone, on that app for the trails. And there was an old horse trail that was marked down there. And that horse trail went straight to that next meadow. So I was like, wow, this is perfect. And it's just, it's a gorgeous blonde color phase. You know, not not red or cinnamon. This thing was like straight blonde. It was I've never seen a bear like it. Now, how far were you from him when you first saw him? Then, oh, I bet you seven or eight hundred yards. Okay, so you got to so, make quite a bit of distance. I mean, what was the wind doing when you know when you saw him, and you know what was your game plan? The wind the wind was actually pretty calm. Um, I wasn't too concerned about the wind. I it was kind of it was quartering towards me, so I, I had I had the wind in my favor, but it wasn't very strong. It wasn't gusting. It wasn't swirling. You know, it's I'm on a wide open hillside. It's it's pretty consistent. So um, I had the wind in my favor, and I had a trail to get to get in on. And I was like, this is it. I'm gonna kill this bear. It's game over. And uh, 
I said, I just, I just want to get 300 and I'll take the shot. And I start taking that trail and it cuts through the timber and it's, you know, there's, there's a spinal cord laying right on the trail with blood still on it and meat. And I was like, all right, something, oh, oh boy, something's, ha- <laughs> something's hanging out here. Like, just keep going. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, I got to where I could get a shot into that meadow and I mean, I, I got I got to where I could see the whole thing, and the bear was gone. Just just wasn't there anymore. So, do you think he just moseyed on, or do you think he caught your wind or heard you? What I mean, what do you think? I think he I think he just moseyed on. He fed out of there before I could get to it. Um, I only had to go like four hundred yards, but that trail wasn't exactly, you know, a maintained trail. It was it was pretty brushy. It was it was pretty loud. It was more like a little, like a deer trail, you know, just a, a little path. Um, cause I, it was an old horse trail, so it was pretty well overgrown. But, I mean, it's possible he heard me. I mean, I was trying to be quick. I was trying to film it. I was trying to film, like, updates along the way, like, you know, talking about what I was doing, trying to show the bear, do an interview. You know, I did, like, two little quick interviews talking about what I was going to try to do and, I got there and he was just gone and I know I was in the right field like I just slowly worked my way through you know see a little more see a little more see a little more and I mean I snuck up on two mule deer that were out there so I was like if I snuck up on the mule deer I should have been able to sneak up on the bear if it was out there like I didn't blow the deer out so I don't think I blew the bear out. And, Could uh, you see just... the bear for the most of the walk, or was it one no. of those things you had to, you couldn't see him for you know basically the whole walk? I couldn't see him basically the whole walk. There was there was two times I could see him, like where there was enough, you know the there was enough opening in the trees. Other than that, it was just I, I couldn't see anything. Yeah, I was just on the trail watching the map, knowing where I wanted to pop out, and I mean I came out where I wanted to. It's just that he wasn't there. Hmm. so by this time it's dark you know it was had i shot that bear it would have been you know in the last few minutes of legal shooting time so it was getting dark up there and um that was five miles uh just short of five miles on that one um like i said it was dark by then so bushwhacked my way back down to the trail and i came out right where that third bridge was that i went in on and um and at least I had an easy walk out. I was How on, on eerie that. was it walking out in the dark like that? <laughs> oh, I, I, I put my rifle on my backpack, and uh, I had my hand on my Glock the whole way out. <laughs> <laughs> just, just my my headlamp and uh, holding my pistol on my on my hip belt, you know, on the on the pack. Just had one hand on that the whole time, and it was like, it was weird, but it's just one of those things where it's like just just keep going. You know, I had, just keep your head down and forget how far you have to go. Just keep going. <laughs> Do you have any pucker moments? <laughs> uh, honestly, no. Like, the, I got charged by a a cow moose with a newborn calf, but that was in my, she, she charged my truck. That was really? the first night. Yeah, the night I saw the grizzly. Um, she, it was kind of cool. She walked out into the road, like stepped into my headlights. Uh, there's a, there's a forest service cabin out on that road and it just kind of stepped over the fence and just walked right out in front of me. And it stood there looking at me for a second. And then it started just like walking around in circles, like a, like a dog chasing its tail. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you got a calf in there waiting to come out. Like, you're not going to let me get through here. And sure enough, this feeble little newborn just comes out, you know, like all knees and legs and just little, one little calf and I was like, all right, I, I got you. Like I backed yeah. up and I shut my lights off and tried to watch for them to, to make their way across. And I turned my lights back on. I started driving a little bit, turned my lights back on. And she was like 15 feet out my window, out the driver's side window. And, <laughs> and I was like, Oh shit, here we go. So I coming just, in the, coming in the door. I, yeah. I put it in reverse and just stepped on it and, gave them more space and shut the lights off again. They eventually worked their way down into the river and, you know, 
I know better than that, though. I mean, a moose, you know, is one of the most defensive animals out there when it comes to their young. So it's like, yep, just leave them alone. They're just trying to get by, and it was cool, but I wasn't trying to give them a hard time either. So, um, so yeah, at this point, I've seen two black bears and a grizzly, and <clears throat> I'm staying in the cabin. And the guy showed me two spots on the map, so I get back there that night, and I'm like, man, I don't know what I want to do. Like, I said, I'm definitely not going back up after that blonde. If I kill him up, if I kill that bear up there, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of work. That'll be two trips for sure by myself, and it's it's way up there, and that, that's going to be a day process just to get a whole bear out of there. And I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slow play it. I had three days to hunt on this one, so I'm going into my third day, and I said, I'm just going to slow play it. And I, I on that app, you can add a layer that shows um, historical burn sites, so like forest fires, yep. whether they were planned or not. Um, so he told me that he's like, there's just one spot that burned like two years ago. You know, they're they're planting trees up there right now, but, you know, there's a lot of a lot of new growth in there, really lush grass, and it's, you know, there's no canopy. The trees are all burned up, so it's getting a lot of sunshine. Like, it's, like, probably worth checking out. You can glass for a long time, and it's an easy walk. And I was like, that sounds good. So I I pulled it up on the map, and I found the trail to take me in there, and that's what I did. I just I went in at noon, and I was, I was at my glassing point by, like, 2, and I was glassing that entire burn until about five thirty, six o'clock and uh i didn't see a single bear in there all afternoon so it's one of those things i mean i just i said i'm gonna slow play it and that's what i did i, I only went like four miles in i sat there for four hours and i was just running time lapses and taking pictures and you know just thinking about the last couple days and um I packed it all up at six o'clock and said, "I've I've got a decent walk back. I'll just take my time and I'll hunt my way out of here, and you know, hope I get lucky." Um, there so you said this right was off. your last night, right? Yeah, this is my last day. So you've you've all but like basically, you know, thrown in the towel, basically. Yeah, no, I did, and it was like I I started I packed my stuff up and I was walking down that that road again. It's just a Forest Service road. It's like a two track road. Uh, they open it up to like four wheel drive vehicles and and horses and four wheelers uh, once bear season's over. But I'm walking out of there and I'm just like, like I don't care. This was this was a cool trip. Like I just drove from Iowa to Bozeman to Big Sky, caught up with some friends, saw some bears. You know, weather's been great. Met some cool people. Like this this is an awesome trip. Like I, I was prepared to go home empty handed. You know, I I haven't ever hunted Montana. I haven't ever hunted bears other than, you know, over a a barrel. And right. it was like, I'm just going to go. Like, I want to try it out and see what happens. And I get, I get down to where the trail splits off to where I have to head back to my truck. And I just, I pull the map out and I sit down on the, on the side hill and I'm just like looking at stuff and I'm just reading the map and looking at how, how long it takes to bike certain trails and whatever, just trying to decide if I want to go up the other road I didn't go up or should I just go back to the truck. And I uh, probably sat there for like 15 minutes just trying to decide that, and I ended up deciding to walk, head for the truck. So there was a lot of spots that looked berry, you know, that just looked like there should be bears down there. It's right along the river. You know, it's really thick across the river. I know there's meadows up here above me, so I'm just going to walk it back and, you know, just kind of keep my eyes peeled on that river, and um, I got probably three quarters of a mile from the gate where I was parked, and I look over the edge, like, it, it's like a straight drop off off the edge of the road, and it goes down to the river, and it was, I, it didn't hit me till I got home, but it was like that, you ever seen the movie uh, Legends of the Fall with yep. Brad Pitt? You know that scene where his dad's like there's a grizzly you know he's like is it my grizzly and they the next scene they go <laughs> yeah. and he's up on the cliff with his with his rifle and the grizzly's just walking below him and you know he decides to let the bear live and you know it's like his spirit animal or whatever yeah but uh 
it looked just like that. Like if there was a river running through that through that bottom where he saw that grizzly, that that's exactly what this looked like, and it was just so picture perfect. And you know, it was raining on me half of the walk down, so I'm just like, I'm like, this is over, you know. And then I I get to that spot, I look down at the river, and I just catch a bear moving through the timber. And he must have been bedded, like, between the road and the river. Because, come to find out, like, his legs weren't wet. Like, when I shot him, I thought he came across the river, and he, I just happened to catch him. But they weren't wet, so there's no way he crossed the river. He must have been bedded all day. Like, I walked by him five hours previous, you know, within 150 yards of him, and I never even knew it. Right. So, I, I well, it just him, makes you I, think, too, in all that walking you do, like how many bears are you walking by that are, like, real close to you, you know, that yeah. just kind of hunker down? Yeah, that's the thing. It's Do they do they not even hear you because they're just sleeping? Or do they just know to lay there and let you go by? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know that much about bears, you know, I've, in comparison to what I've learned about whitetails. But um, it, was just, it was just cool, man. Like, it, the rain stopped, and... It's like the sun broke out, but it was like still raining, like you know, quarter mile away. And but the sun was coming through that rain, and like you look up, and it looks like it's coming down in slow motion. Like I, I don't know how to describe it. Like people call it a sun shower or whatever. Like when it's raining out, right? It's sunny at the yep. same time, and it's kind of you know, it's cold. You're I was wet, and it was just like this. I'm I'm done. You know, I was mentally. I said it's over. I got I got three quarters of a mile and this hunt's over with i saw that i saw that bear down below and the road took a little bit of a bend to the left and i i scurried up to that bend and i just took a knee there was a, there was a, a white pine or a spruce that was hanging over the edge of the road and i i hit one knee and as soon as my knee hit the ground he just pops up over the over the edge of the road at like 90 so he yards. was getting ready to cross the road then yeah he he was he wasn't feeding through that stuff like when I saw him he was he was walking like he was on a mission, so yep. like in a split second I'm just like he's coming to the road, and I just I said I'm gonna I, I I ran up to that bend, and I I put my left knee down, and I was just like I had the rifle in my hand the whole walk out, he popped up and I let him cross the road, and I mean I I identified it as a black bear, and I let it cross the road and. It took like I don't know seven or eight steps up the bank, and like I, I said, just let him let him go a little bit. He might die up there or on the road. <laughs> so I shot. I, I made like a little squeaking noise at him, and he stopped and looked right at me broadside, and um, I, I just I just let him have it and freehand. Yeah, <laughs> freehand. Uh, how far? Like ninety. I mean that's still pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean after I mean I just I just ran up to this bend in the road and I I literally just I put one knee down and it was like I, I don't know how to like you know like when you're driving and a deer just jumps out of the ditch out of nowhere you know it was like that but he was like on stride it was just like a such a fluid thing he did just coming up that up that hill and then stepped onto the road like eye level with me right there and I was like, Whoa, here we go. Yep. You know, and it was I like I said, I I gave up mentally. I said, This is over with. I had a great time. Like I'm glad I didn't shoot one of those bears yesterday or the day before. Like I would have had my ass handed to me trying to get those bears out. Like it, it, I was so glad I didn't shoot either one of those other bears or have a chance to. But uh I shot this one he, you know, turned like bears do, like towards the towards the shot, and he was just like doing circles, like spinning. And uh, I pulled up on him again, and he bailed off the edge of the road where he came from. And I just sat there for a second, and like I heard a bunch of crashing. I didn't hear the, any death moan, and I was like, oh god, like if he got across that river. Or if he's, like, dead in the water, you know, I'm just thinking, like, worst-case scenario, I'm like, this is going to turn into a disaster. Right. And uh, I bent down, I picked up my brass and threw it in my pocket, pulled my cell phone out, and I was like, I just shot a bear. Like, I was doing a little interview. Like, I didn't have camera set up or nothing. Like, I'm by myself. 
and this just happened like in seconds. So I pull my cell phone out and I'm filming a little interview saying, you know, I, I just shot this bear. Like this is what happened, and like I'm gonna walk up here and see. And I walk up there and I look over the edge and he's just he's laying there, dead, twenty right feet off the below road. the right off the road, three quarters of a mile Jeez. from my truck. And I was like, I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> How easy of a recovery is that? <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, man. Like, I reflected pretty hard that night over the last, you know, about the last the previous two days and how everything worked out. And it's like this was a gift from somebody because, like I said, I would have had my ass handed to me if I could have gotten a shot at one of the other two bears being so far away from the truck in foreign ground, you know, foreign territory. And it was like to have this happen on a beautiful color phase, like his legs are like cinnamon and his face, his head, and like his, his whole back is just like, is blonde and like wooly. It's, it's not, I, I honestly, like I walked up on it and I was like, Oh my God, I just shot a grizzly. Like I, I screwed up bad. <laughs> like this is, this is not going to be a good day. Like I, I had to, I was second guessing myself like for probably a half an hour, like sitting there like, Oh my God. And, uh, you know, I, I, I ran my interviews, but did my recovery and put my tag on him. And I, I field dressed him right there by the river. And I was like, it's like, well, if I did, it's an honest, like, I'll admit it. Like if somebody tells me like, this is not a black bear, like I'm going to own up to that. Like I'll, I'll suffer the consequence. Like, right. Honest mistake. But it wasn't. I got back to the to the cabin I was staying at, and the guy had just come back in with his team of horses, and I was like, I said, I said, what are you doing right now? And he goes, uh, not going to get a bear. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> he goes, well, did you get one? And I said, yeah, it's it's up there on that on that road into the fire that you showed me. And I said, it's just past mile six, like just past the gate, and. He goes, all right, man, badass. You know, he's like, good job. Like, That's awesome. He's like, I'll go with you tomorrow if you want to go back up there. But he's like, I'm, I, I'm not going back up there tonight. You know, it's going on ten o'clock. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, no problem. And we looked at the weather, and um, it was plenty cold that night. It was, it was mid to low forties, and I had, like I said, I field dressed him, and I left him belly up, um, just right there where he, where he expired off the road, and. Um, we went back in the next day at, at six o'clock in the morning and he helped me, you know, he was holding legs and I, I skinned it out and we quartered everything up. And so did um, he, did he tell you, like, were you asking him like, is this a grizzly? Or is this a black bear? <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I, I showed him pictures that night. Um, when I got, when I first got back and he was like, he's like, no, that's a black bear. And He's like, but man, it looks like a grizzly. And I said, I know that the colors are one thing, but like, look at the claws on this thing. Like usually a black bear's claws are only going to come out like one to two inches past their pad, like on, on their, yep. their toes. This thing, I mean, you've, you've seen the pictures, but if you go, go to that one picture where I'm holding, like where the, uh, the brass, I'm holding the brass against his claw. And then like, they're a solid three and a half inches out beyond like, beyond his pad so that was that was the first thing i said it made me you know question myself but um you know he's just he's got that black bear head it's more you know kind of a basketball it's very rounded you know it doesn't really have that kind of a pointy like a dog type of face like a grizzly does it didn't have the hump in the shoulder like you know and again like i said i i had to check it in to montana fish and wildlife and you know they didn't even question it they, they, I took the hide, the meat, you know, showed them the pictures, everything. And, you know, they were like, no, you're good. That's black bear. No doubt. I was like, perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, it was just for a solo mission over the counter tag to someplace I've never been, you know, it's, I went to three different places. I hunted three different, three different drainages, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And I was just. I was just putting miles on, you know, and the last day I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it the easy way. See what happens. And I mean, it, it could not have been any more easy. 
Right. I mean, for it to die right there by the road and everything and just pull right up yeah. to it, <laughs> you know, and yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, that, that was, worked out pretty good. It was a blessing for sure. Like, like I said, it was a gift because I, I would have been in trouble if I shot one of them other two. I know it. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, now, you know, too, for, for later hunts too, is like, and when you're by yourself, it's like, think, think about where this thing might end up and how deep you are and, you know, yeah. and, and how much time you have to get it out. And it's like, if you would have shot that bear at last light, I mean, you would have had to go try to find it and then either Cape quarter it and everything right there that night, or, you know, you got a long day ahead of you the next day and you got to get back to the trailhead. Like you said, you were five, six miles back in there, you know, yeah. and saw a grizzly yep. and, you know, it's mother nature is, is very, <laughs> Not forgiving, you know, and it's no. like you never know what what situation might come about. Yeah, and it's what that guy was telling me out there is, you know, there's there's only two things you're going to eat a bear out there. It's like if you leave a bear out like that, there's only two things you're going to walk up on that might be eating it. One is another bear, and the other is a wolf. Yep. You know, and either way, you're approaching a predator who has just found this free meal. It's like you walk in on something like that, you just, you give it up and say, yep, it's yours. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what you don't want to, but it's like, there's nothing else you can do about it. Yeah. That, at that point, there's nothing else you can do. So it's just, but luckily yeah. that, that did not happen for me and it was perfectly intact. It was all cooled down. Um, you know, there wasn't even a raven on it. It was still had both eyes in it. Like nothing, nothing touched it. So, yeah, perfect. Um, it was great. I mean, from the time we went back in, then we parked the truck, the walk in, plus all the work on the walk out, we were on the way back to his house by 8 30. Oh, that's that's quick and easy. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. So, I mean, that's that's a huge accomplishment there by yourself. So, I mean, that's that's like two of three legs, you know, in three weeks. So, you know, let's, let's wrap it up. What do we have for the third leg, which it was your wife's hunt and, yep. you know, break it down as far as like, she's never really killed anything right with her bow. So this is like, nope. this is new territory for her. Yeah, it is. Uh, I bought her a bow, I don't know, four or five years ago that, uh, she hunted with a few times in New York, but never shot anything. You know, she shoots really well. Um, and we moved to Iowa and I bought her a, a Hoyt Power Max and kind of up the poundage a little bit on her and give her a little bit more of, you know, a, a hunting type bow instead of a starter bow. And, um, you know, started shooting that really, really well. And, uh, this guy, I'm, I'm good friends with him. You know, he's an outfitter in Saskatchewan. And, uh, he called me and said he had a whole group cancel. Like his, his last week camps empty. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Like, I'll bring the wife up. Like, I'm not going to hunt. I just want her to, to hunt. And he's like, all right, spread the word. Try to get me two or three more hunters. And long story short, uh, another husband and wife went from Oklahoma, who I guided turkey hunts with, or four, I should say, in Kansas, uh, like two years ago now. Um, just kind of kept in touch with them over the years. And uh, they ended up booking two more hunts for themselves and it was just the four of us up there. So it was kind of neat. It was good, good time. Um, so when I was in Montana, my wife flew into Bozeman, uh, the morning after I shot my bear. So we packed the bear out. I was back to the cabin by nine. She flew in at 11. So I hit, I had the meat processor and taxidermist and everything picked her up at noon. We had lunch in Bozeman and, you know, just kind of saw Montana for the evening and uh, we drove from Bozeman all the way up to Saskatoon, got into camp that night. Uh, no, we got into, yeah, we got to Saskatoon that night, met the other couple, stayed in Saskatoon, got into camp the next day, and um, we kind of went all in on this boar that showed up the day that we got into Canada. So the day we got to Saskatoon, this boar showed up on a particular bait site and uh, just a giant old bear, like probably a 20 plus year old bear and sitting on his butt like a dog, you know, 
he's got his front paws on the ground, legs straight out, you know, sitting down, and uh, his chest was above the top of the barrel, a 55 gallon barrel, like like brisket height was above the barrel. So this thing is just a, a beast. Like I sent you a picture of it, and it's it's a toad. <laughs> he's a giant. I mean, he's yeah, uh, like he's the epitome of once, a giant bear. Yeah, I mean, people say once in a lifetime, like you know, it means a lot, and you know, like it's like it's you know, just to emphasize, but that that was a definite once in a lifetime bear, black bear, and uh, we kind of went all in on him. Said we'll give him you know the first three four days, even if we don't see anything, like we're just going to hunt that stand out and and hope we see him and. Um, we ended up seeing a sow there, uh, three days in a row, uh, no, two days in a row. Day three, we saw nothing there. Uh, day four, we decided, okay, the sow's not, you know, in asterisk. She's not dragging any boars around with her. If she was, we had seen one by now, like, we're going to go check out a new stand. So day four, we go to a new stand and again see nothing so we saw nothing two days in a row and then i think by this time what we're on day four yeah day four we go back to the stand where the big bear was and uh we see the sow again but she's acting goofy and she's like she comes into the bait like all cautious and like she's looking around and you know she's feeding there for like 15 20 minutes and then she looks up into the brush, you know, where she came from and she turns her ears forward and she starts looking real hard and she kind of takes a couple steps like she's going to leave and then looks over her shoulder and then she just bolts, like just takes off out of there. I was like, there's a boar back there. There's something following her. Like she wants to get away. And, uh, we sat it out and never saw another bear. And was she a good size? Sal? Yeah, she was pretty good size. She was probably three quarters of that barrel. Okay. Um, she was, she was pretty big for a sow, but uh, we never saw another bear that night. And we get back to camp, and uh, Sean, the outfitter, was like, "He's like, you can go in on that if you want, and you know, I'm not going to say you can't hunt that bear, but he's like, if you want to go at least have a few more options, there's a pretty hot bait right here across from camp." And I was like, "Yeah, let's do that. Like, it's our last day. Like, let's just go at least have some entertainment, and you know, maybe get a shot at something." Like this, this big board's obviously not really cooperating. So let's just play the let's just play the numbers game here, and we'll move. So we go in. This is the last day of her hunt. Now this is day five, and uh, we we don't see anything. Nothing. 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 And then eight o'clock, these two little cubs come running in, just tearing shit up. Just they're on the barrel. They're on top of it. They're like pulling on the beaver tube you know and i mean they're they're really fun to watch like they have such personalities like i think all bears do really but those cubs were just like like little kids i mean it was pretty cool to watch them just mess around and the mama was back there the sow was hanging out you know back in the timber ways we kept seeing glimpses of her and she was just watching making sure they were you know nothing's gonna happen to them or whatever and they uh the mom moseys off, and the cubs end up taking off after her and followed her out. Uh, 20 minutes or so go by. 20 minutes or so go by, and uh, and another, she goes, Allie goes, bear. She goes, same trail. And uh, I was like, okay, okay. Get the camera on her. Like, I'm, I'm filming everything all week for her, and um, this bear comes in, and it's a little bit before nine o'clock and uh like i said it's not getting dark till like almost 10 so we got we're in prime time here last hour and um bear comes in straight behind the barrel and lays down like bear's butt is behind the barrel and there's a tree covering up its vitals all i can see is like elbows and head like and she can see even less so So this is a this is a shooter bear yeah yeah, this is a shooter bear, and I'm just rolling on this thing, eating, and, like, I'm watching her, and, like, her her knees start shaking, like, her legs are bouncing a little bit, she's starting to get worked up, and 
like she knows this is this is her shot like this is the one yep. she's gonna take a shot at like she starts you know just getting excited and i'm watching her i'm watching the broad hit on her arrow and it's just like it's dancing back and forth just and bouncing <laughs> just bouncing and i was like i'm like it's all right like just just relax like the bear's totally calm like i said just remember your process like hit your anchor point you know steady pull like just keep pressure on that you know when you're a full draw you know just and then just just squeeze the trigger just hold that pin as solid as you can and just squeeze it nice and slow and She's like, I am breathing. I'm trying to breathe. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay. Like, so the bear's given me time to just roll on it for probably, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. So I'm, I'm getting some tight shots. I'm, I'm pulling out, getting wide shots. And I was moving the camera arm, and I got a really cool shot of, like, her and the bear in the same frame. Like, she's framed up right. The bear's down there, framed up on the left. It's, it's only a 12-yard shot. The, the barrel's 12 yards away. And uh, I had my cell phone in my hand because I had it figured out to how how I could run the phone on her, you know, as a live angle and still run the camera, you know, for the main angle to get the kill shot. So I'm holding my phone and I'm watching the bear and the bear goes to sit up, like it sits up on its butt and uh, she she rips back on the bow, like goes to full draw. And I was like, hey, hold on a second, like let me get back on him. And the bear stands up, takes like two steps and I'm rolling focus back and I hear thwack and I see the green nocturnal go through my screen, the LCD screen. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I said, hold on a second. I got to get back on him. And she goes, I thought you said you were on him. <laughs> and I was like, no, I said, hold on a second. And she's like, well, I wasn't going to wait. It was leaving. And I was like, ah, it's all right. And I'm like, well, what do you think you hit? Like, so goes, you didn't know, see him where where she hit or I, anything? I didn't see nothing. I heard the bow go off, and I saw it run away with the arrow <laughs> sticking out of it. And I'm like, my initial thoughts, like, oh, my gosh, he just shoulder shot this bear. Like, it's not going to die. Like, you know, and she looks up at me, and she's like, I, it didn't penetrate very far. And I was like, oh, my gosh, really? And then I, I hear a crash, and then I start hearing, Burr! I hear the moan, and I was like, he dead, you know, and <laughs> he gone. she, yeah, she, it went from like, Oh my God, did I do it right? Like, was it a good shot to, to dead? Like we knew right then. And Man, uh, that's so I cool. mean, she just, she made an absolute perfect shot. And what, what she did was she just, the bear was quartering away a little bit and she put it right where you need to. And that broadhead hit the offside shoulder. And when we scanned it out, you could see like just the, again, just the tip had, broken through and there, there was a little tiny blood clot on the inside of the skin like on the inside of the hide from where it's you know where it stopped and uh i mean she got she got both lungs and that bear was dead in in 30 yards you know and it that's was that's awesome it was dead in seconds i mean it wasn't like a it didn't have to bleed out you know we didn't have to wait you know we we heard the moan we knew it was dead and i mean it was a matter of seconds and it was only Man, I bet you it was 40 yards from where impact was, 30 to 40 That's yards. That's great. That's and, sweet. Uh, yeah, so we had time to take pictures and um, get the four-wheeler in there and load it up and, and get out of there just as it was getting dark. And uh, we were the first ones back to the river for our pickup, and, uh, and everybody was everybody met us, and it was just a – we were the only ones that ended up killing. So um, – it was, you know, myself and Allie and, and uh, Jared and Kenzie, the other couple that were there. And, um, you know, there were beers in the boat, and it was like we had a Coconut dead bear. Coconut crushers, camp. baby. <laughs> yep. Yep, you know it. And uh, Love me it some kokanee. Yeah, yeah, you got to have it. They have it in Montana. I was surprised to find it in the oh, States, but gosh. they have it in Montana. I wish they could have it in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was just – it was just that cool, like, camp, you know, camp kill feeling. You know, everybody was there. Everybody had been hunting and seeing bears, and everybody had opportunities. Like, the other two had opportunities on, on smaller boars and chose to pass on them. And, you know, I mean, they weren't there to to make sure they left, you know. with you know, It's not like they were going to leave empty-handed. You know, they didn't care. They were there for the hunt and experience and camaraderie, you know, it, it, all that stuff. It was, a, it was a remote camp. I mean, it was... I don't know. 
three-and-a-half-hour drive north from Saskatoon, hit the logging roads, another 25 minutes, uh, park the truck, get on a four-wheeler for 45 minutes, get to the river, and then cross the river into camp. So, I mean, it was a little bit of a process, but it was just cool. Like, on the riverbank, sunset, everybody's standing there over this bear, like, talking about the hunt, having a beer, and it was just like, it was it was just cool. And it was her first her first bow kill. And uh, I don't know, having her come to Montana and then us driving up there and, you know, it went surprisingly better than I thought it would. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah. That's a fun so. hunt, though. I mean, that remote, you yeah. know, going in there, doing that remote, it, it just gives you that feeling like we're out there. You know what I yeah. mean? And it just gives yep. you an extra element of this is just a cool experience. You don't care that there's, you know, you're, you've are you been, you know, going to the bathroom in a in a shit house. You know what I mean? You right. don't care that it's a Sody yeah. two-holer or, you know, <laughs> whatever. You just don't. It's right. just part of the camaraderie and part of the, the camp, and that's what's cool about it. I love those camps. That's Those are so yeah. neat. So And that's sweet. She must have been tickled pink just to, you know, get that opportunity and, and finally get that monkey off her back. Oh, it was, she was so excited, man. Just like, you could see it in her eye, like just that trip in and like the four wheeler ride, you know, out of the truck and like the, getting to the river for the first time. And like just the way she walked around camp and like was checking things out. Like it was like a kid in the candy store, literally like. That's cool. And and it was just, it was cool for me to, to watch that, you know, and to, to get it on camera all week long and, and then have her have an opportunity on the last day like that, you know, last hour, last day, just like I did in Montana, you know, and she just, she couldn't have done a better job. I mean, it was just, it was perfect. That's sweet. Oh, that's cool, man. That makes me want to get in the woods. <laughs> I'm ready for, to get after some whitetails for sure. <laughs> oh man. I was, we, we ended up, we drove all the way back from, from that hunt back to Des Moines. And that was like a 21 hour drive. And I bet you, I bet you a better part of ten hours. My mind was was on my mule deer hunt coming up in August, so <laughs> <laughs> I know I know what you mean. Yep. So. Well, cool, man. I want to let's wrap this baby up. It's we're at you know a little over an hour, and you know this is what we want to do is kind of get you plugged back into everything and and oh, yeah. uh, get you back to reality because you've been living like a like a uh, kid for the last three weeks. And I've been jealous. I don't want to. So I want to go back. <laughs> Well, cool, uh, man. It's cool catching up with you and, and doing this, and you know you're a three for three, and yeah, I mean, you can't I'm beat not. that, man. Uh, I just, I just hope it continues. Like I said, into that that mule deer hunt, and later into September on my elk hunt, I'll be going back to, to Montana. So, I uh, Heck yeah. I hope it's not asking too much, but I wouldn't mind if I if this was my year. <laughs> well, hopefully the well hasn't run dry for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm hoping to. Well, anyway. cool, man. Let's uh, let's jump off here and, and uh, call her an evening. All right, sounds good, man. Good catching up with you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs>